Right, here's another episode of 327 Federal Magnum versus 357 Magnum. And today what we have is the TAC XP bullet and the double tap ammunition. This is loaded by double tap. The 357 Magnum is a 110 grain TAC XP solid copper bullet and is rated at 1700 feet per second out of a 5 inch barrel. The 327 Federal Magnum is a 75 grain bullet rated at 1725 feet per second out of a 6 inch barrel. But what will we actually get out of snub nose revolvers? And will the 327 Federal be comparable to the 357 Magnum in power and damage? And the way we're going to test that is we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of accuracy and velocity we're getting at the same time. And then, as always, we're going to go through the juggernaut box. The test its ballistics and we're going to go through a one and three quarter inch pack of baloney covered by four layers of denim followed by one quarter inch medium density fiberboard to simulate ribs or sternum the resistance it would give to a bullet in the bullet expansion and into water jugs to catch that projectile so let's see what we get between the 327 federal magnum and the 357 magnum with the double tap tac xp ammunition so let's get started with the test all right, first up, we're going to test the 357 Magnum. I'm about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. I'm going to fire single action on my first shot just to get a feel for how much recoil this ammunition has. So, here we go. 1267. 1311. 1271. 1302, 1194, so big variance on velocity, a lot of flash and a lot of recoil for 110 grain. Typically 110 grains and magnums are a little bit lighter than that, but that one's got quite a bit, uh, enough that I can kind of feel the uh, rubber going into my skin a little bit. Now let's try the 327 Federal Magnum and see how that compares. All right, 327 Federal Magnum out of the LCR. We'll see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get. 1371. 1345. 1343. 1340. 1245. So the last shot, a little variance on that velocity as well. However, the recoil, to me, felt about half of the 357 Magnum. This wasn't much different than like a 9mm. Not much recoil at all. As for the 357, that's still a 357 as far as recoil goes. Now let's hit the Juggernaut box and see what kind of damage we get between the two. This should be very interesting. Alright, first up, 357 Magnum. We're going to see what kind of damage this does. Uh, we have pretty good velocity, so uh, this should hit pretty hard. Let's see what we get with 357. I was blinded, even though it's daytime, I was blinded. <laughs> and we took off the back of the uh, baloney pack, uh, the uh, particle board, density fiber board was ripped right off of there. That's pretty cool. And here's the back of the fiber board, and here is the back of the baloney. Um, not huge damage on the baloney for a 357, uh, but really not bad at all for a snub nose. Now let's see what we got in water jugs. All right, first jug took on a huge amount of damage, more than typical. Uh, this jug is just shredded. Jug two, about average damage for jug two. You know, the impact in jug three, and I see just the tiniest little dent on jug four, and that's perfect. I've always said that's perfect. We, if we can mark out the back of the third jug and hit the fourth one, that's about equivalent of 15 inches of ballistic shell. Uh, perfect. So I see the projectile in here. And we have the perfect flowering that we typically do see with the Barnes bullet. Usually performs really well. Uh, the petals kind of roll back, however, it does still limit the penetration and produce a pretty big expanded hollow point. Let's see how the 327 Federal Magnum compares. Alright, 327 Federal Magnum. Uh, the LCR, we'll see if we get. 
I got a nice centered hit, and the first thing I notice is that I don't have the flash out of the 357. The 357 has a lot of flash blinding. 327, I didn't notice that on the chronograph or the ballistic uh, box test. And a really good amount of damage through the baloney pack. Uh, the back of the particle board here is pretty on par with the 357. The damage is pretty much on par with the 357 as well. Let's see what we got in water jugs. All right, jug one. And like we see with a lot of other 327s, there's a lot of debris in it. There's not a lot of debris in other cartridges, but the 327 and 32H and R mag seem to put a lot of that particle board in the first jug. Jug two, a little bit less damage on both the first and second jug, but not a lot less, but a little less. Jug three, exactly like the 357, we have a little dent out the back of jug three. That should uh, equate to about 15 inches in ballistics jug. So the projectile is in jug three. And what we got with the 327 is inconsistent expansion. For some reason, half of the bullet rolled in on itself into the hollow cavity. The other half uh, rolled outward. So what is my final synopsis of this ammunition? I don't like the 357, to be honest. It, it felt like it had too much flash, too much recoil. Uh, the damage was pretty good, but it just seemed like a little bit too much. It didn't seem like a short barrel load by any stretch of the imagination. The 327 did good. Even though this bullet doesn't look that impressive, I feel a sense of confidence with the 327 Federal and that Ruger. And, and that's always one of the most important things that people got to understand when it comes to having a good carry round is you got to have a good sense of confidence. If you're shooting out in the range in any type of, it, where it feels like it's too much for you to handle, or it's too much flash, or it's too loud, or something like that, it's a good idea not to carry that round. But something that feels like you can really control it well, it's very accurate, and it works pretty well, that's a good round. So I would say that the 327 Federal of the Double Tap is a worthwhile ammunition, not so much with the 357 Magnum. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would rate the 357 probably about a 6, because it, it just it didn't do anything spectacular, it had extra flash to go along with it. The 327 Federal, even though it has less than perfect expansion, I would consider this to be about an 8 out of 10 for the 327 Federal. I would have no problem carrying this round. It seemed to work pretty well. So that's what you get today with the double tack with the Barnes Tac XP bullet. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.